Hello, Web Summit. Do you know that a healthy smile can make you live better and longer? Today, I'm going to talk about how AI can improve and change your smile, and also how AI can improve your life. By the way, when was the last time that you went to the dentist? I hope you go to the dentist every six months. Prevention is the key. As Luis Cornaro said, we should give people's recipes so they would never get sick. Regarding to oral diseases, oral diseases affect, affect 3.5 billion people. It's one of the top public problems worldwide. 50% of the global population is affected by some kind of gum disease. And periodontal disease is the most common one. But it can be treated and it can be prevented. And AI can help. And AI can help. Do you think our mouth and our body, they are connected? Our oral health is directly connected with our overall health. So I can tell you that periodontal disease and uh, tooth loss are directly related with heart disease, diabetes, dementia, and a few more. So if we reduce the, um, the prevalence and incidence of gum disease, we are lowering the, our systemic diseases, Crohn diseases, and other complications. So let's continue focused. Our mouth and our body, they need to be connected. Actually, I never saw a mouse coming alone to my office. So what if AI can help us and to prevent oral health diseases? Do you know what are dentists, the dentists, and the biggest challenge in dentistry? Can you imagine? It's something that we think normally that could be very simple. It's diagnostics. I'm going to explain you a bit more. In my team, we are 22 dentists and five oral hygienists. I have a really amazing team. But sometimes it's common in our practice that we have different clinical opinions. And why this happens? Dentists are used to work very isolated. In their clinics, perhaps, they are the only doctors, and they are used to take decisions by themselves. In my practice, even though we are 22 dentists, I work side by side with my colleague, Philippe. We went together to the same high school, university, we went the same, the same courses. But we are different. We are different human beings. We are different perspectives, different ideas. And if we have the same patient in front of me and she has the same in front of her, perhaps we can have two different diagnostics. And why this happens? First of all, I think it's very important to distinguish what is a diagnostic and a treatment plan. A diagnostic is my problem. The treatment plan is the solution that I'm going to have. I can have 100 solutions for the same problem. There was a, a very nice study made in the US by the Reader's Digest. So a journalist went all over the US to 50 clinics, and he got almost 50 different diagnostics, and almost, of course, 50 different treatment plans. So this gives people what? Insecurities. People don't trust their dentists when this happens. That's, that's why when people go to one opinion, second opinion, third opinion, like, and every dentist says say something different, that's why people don't like to go to the dentist, I suppose, no? And when I set a treatment plan, I, of course, I have my clinical data uh, and the, the story of the patient, etc. But I also need to, to see and listen to the expectations of the patients how much time he has to spend at the clinic if he lives close to the clinic or in another country, uh, how much money he wants to spend, whatever. AI nowadays 
is incorporated in our in some in some of our radiographic uh, softwares and can minimize and uniformize our diagnostic here you can see that our software tells us where i have cavities where i have restorations to be, to be, to be changed the bone loss and everything can be measured so it, this is not like a, if i imagine there is a carry there is a cavity or whatever because sometimes we look into, into a tooth and I see a brown spot, I see a black spot or a white spot. For some dentists it's a cavity, for some others not. So in the end, I need someone to untie this decision. And here, AI is our connection. AI is our assistant. Here also in, in this radiographic, we can see the, the, the AI system telling us where is the, the, the root canal, the feelings, what, where, what needs to be done, and what is right. And also, as I saw yesterday here, there is, all, there, there, there is a, a software that can identify implants, because nowadays, we, as a dentist, we receive patients with all the implants made by other dentists, and we never know their, the brand if you want to change them. Also, even still in the, in the image side, we have our intraoral scanners that now, some of them can also, with AI systems, identify caries. All of these can help us to have better diagnostics. The intraoral scanners, they came and changed dentistry forever. I remember 10 years ago when I got my first scanner, uh, it's really not changed directly my practice because it's not easy to add something in a, in a dentist's life or in a doctor's life. I don't know if you are used to deal with doctors and dentists, but they are very resistant to change. Perhaps they are humans. But right now, 10, 10 years passed, and uh, my goal is still to, to transform my practice into 100% digital. I can say that I am 85%, because I still have dentists and technicians that sometimes they prefer to do the both impressions. But we, we are very happy, because we can say 85% of dentists worldwide work with intraoral scanners. We have more precision, more accuracy, and in the end, in the end, it's more clean, it's more quick. Uh, only 9% and 10% of 3D printers, perhaps it's dentists more, more with, that work in more small clinics that send this work to the lab. But what the digital dentistry brings also to us, it's much more fun to work with this. And we need to have fun in our, in our practice. So now I'm going to be the patient. I'm going to be the patient uh, I'm on vacation, and I fall, and I break my front tooth. And I go to a digital dentist, of course. What I expect? I expect my dentist to have a 3D file of my natural, my old tooth, so it, it, can, it, it can replace it in, in my natural shape, in my natural anatomy. And also, if it's necessary, I can perform my implant surgery based on what I was. Digital dentistry really changed dentistry forever. I'm going to present you now some, uh, some softwares or, or some areas that, that uh, have already AI and that can that help us a lot during, the, during the, our, our practice. This is Maria, a patient that came to see us. And this was in our first appointment. Nowadays, with AI, we can talk with the patient. She came for a full mouth rehabilitation, and I, I was proposing her different shapes of, of teeth, different templates, frameworks. Uh, so she would tell me, okay, Hugo, I, I prefer this, this shape, other shape. And um, we can never forget that the smile is our identity. We cannot change a smile from one day to the other. And uh, our eyes, they count a lot. So here, I can show her, like, I can show her in the second after that she enters my, my, my office. In the past, to do this kind of digital smile design, I would take a week, more or less. And also, after, with this, uh, this design, this project that I've made, I'm going to go to my lab and I'm, I'm going to design what would be my surgery. Because in the past, dentists used to, used to perform an implant. Okay, I'm going to do a surgery. 
first I have the implantologist and the prosthodontist. And the implantologist, he wants to see where is bone. Okay, bone is here, so I put my implants. And then I go to the prosthodontist. Oh my God, the implant. The implant is not in the right position to rehabilitate. So nowadays, with AI, with AI, we, we can work much quicker, much faster, and with the best precision. We can understand where, we, where is the exact position for our crown. So after, I can design my guides and go for my surgery. A surgery that's going to be much more comfortable, much more accurate, because I know exactly where I'm going to put my implants. And I just, I, just, I just put on top of the teeth a guide. So I follow the steps. It's like doing a puzzle, more or less. And I have my surgery done, and I can put directly my provisional crown. Also, when I go out to the clinic, I, this digital dentistry continues, and AI continues to help us, continues to be our personal assistant. There are apps nowadays that can monitorize how my oral hygiene is being, how I'm, am I brushing my teeth. This can be very interesting if I have a patient living in another side of the world and I'm doing an orthodontic treatment, for example, and I want to see how the teeth are moving. It's not like to have a Zoom call, okay, you are doing fine, you can change a line or whatever. No, I can see exactly where is the teeth moving. And also, also for, um, also in, the, in first appointments to, to define to define, to define smart designs, as we were saying. Nowadays, of course, AI is the next big thing. For us in dentistry, every day we have new studies in all the fields of dentistry. And um, we are super grateful. We are not afraid that the AI is going to take our place, that robots are going to replace us. I would say, to sum up, that AI can support dentists in surgeries, in, in virtual designs. They add a huge, huge um, value in our, in our clinical diagnostics. It can uniformize all our diagnostics. We can, be, we can restore the trust from our patients. We can work faster, better. We can deliver on time. We can manage our patients' expectations with, uh, with their projects, their smile designs. But of course, we can never forget that AI and machine learning is based in data driven by humans. And let's, let's let our time, our time free, the time that we gain with this AI, to stimulate our relationship with our patients, to be more human, for the empathy, for the, um, the emotions, and to leave our beautiful profession. Don't forget, next time that you go to the dentist, ask him where he has a artificial intention in his workflow. Book your next appointments. Thank you very much.